Today on X-Play. You are the one from my dreams. Relive the crime of the 70s. The giant cats of the 20s. Get them! And the oblivion of Elder Scrolls. It was too much. We were overwhelmed. Recover the ancient armor of Tiber Septum. It's game time. The prophecy spoke of two, called Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. It was a lesser prophecy. Hello, and welcome to X-Play, the only television show that really understands you. We don't like you, but we understand you. Today's games run the gamut of electronic entertainment from the Roaring Twenties to the Cattle Seventies, from fantasy RPGs to sports games. Then back to fantasy RPGs again. So it's not technically the entire gamut, but it is a large swath of the gamut. Okay. And one of the games, by the way, is extremely good. Extremely! Today, we review Driver, Parallel Lines, a shooter about a man facing his mistakes back in the 70s. Unfortunately, it is not about Jimmy Carter. I would love to play a game about fighting stagflation. That's you. And Atelier Iris 2, the Azoth of Destiny, a Japanese fantasy about the usual stuff. Dragons, a relationships. Azoths, apparently. And finally, we review Shadow Hearts from the New World, the RPG set in the 1920s. Finally, a game that will celebrate illegal drinking, organized crime, and unstoppable Republican electoral victories. Well, there was an RA Varmint Hunter. True. Right. And later in the show, we review Elder Scrolls Oblivion for the Xbox 360. The game has been delayed for months, but months. it was worth it. We may finally have a title that really takes advantage of all the 360 has to offer. It's a fun, fun game. Fun, fun. You should stick around for our review. Yes. But first up, Let's look back to the 70s. It was a happier time, a simpler time. A time with more network variety shows. Uh, and now also a free roaming crime shooter. Here's a review of Driver, Parallel Lines. And now let's check in and see what's going on in the world of Grand Theft Auto. Oh, I'm sorry, this isn't Grand Theft Auto at all. It's Driver, Parallel Lines. And yes, the parallel in the title refers to the parallel world where Grand Theft Auto never existed, because that's the only way this game has any sense of originality to it. Yes, yes, we know, the Driver series did that whole driving around thing first. But please, if you're gonna release a game with a crook driving around town, hitting bystanders, stealing cars, bye -bye. and eluding cops in 2006, you better do something different. Driver Parallel Lines does not. I ain't got no time for this. All right, now that we can all agree that Driver Parallel Lines has all been there, been there, let's move on and see what we can find that's new. The game is much better than the previous Driver game, which stunk worse than Archduke Franz Ferdinand's riding corpse. But, too soon? This game, at least parts of it, takes place in 1970s New York, as far from 80s Miami and 90s Los Angeles as you can get. You can tell by the music. need to hear this song yet again in our lifetimes. David Bowie pimps out that song worse than Hulk Hogan pimps out his daughter on That's My Hogan, or whatever the hell that show is called. The main character's name is TK. See, that's original right there. He's a small-time crook who wants to make it in the big city. Nothing wrong with having a dream. From this point on, CJ, I'm sorry, TK, goes on various missions to increase his status and his bank account. All kinds of missions, like picking up stray liquor store robbers. Okay, just get me out of here. Hit it. Time trials. Uh, man, it's gonna be tough to find something invented here. But I'll find it. I have to. I'm a video game reviewer. See, I need to know you got the expertise I'm requiring. Let's see, let's see. Oh, Tommy, I'm sorry. TK can outrun cops. That's always fun. Always fun. Not only in cars, but on foot. And helicopters will shoot at him. Yowza, yowza, yowza. The crashes look cool. Let's explore that. And yes, that's right. Montage. Now, wasn't that amusing? Sure, the game is decent enough to look at, but come on, this game isn't fooling anybody. At least we think it isn't. Bottom line, do we need yet another GTA ripoff? If you think we do, then this game is for you. For everybody else, we give Driver Parallel Lines three jumps to the shark. 
out of five. The character of the dapper 1970s is just tired. Morgan, you shouldn't be so critical. You know, it's hard out there for a... Yes, that's true. But there was a lot more going on in the 70s than in Bell Bottom. Like when Rhoda got divorced? There was political turmoil, yeah. there was a gas shortage, and there was a meat crisis. Kids, if you'd like to learn more about the meat crisis, consult your local library. You know, putting GTA in a boogie hat does not make a new game. If you want to make a game about the 70s, it needs to be authentic. Just like if you want to make an authentic Japanese RPG, it has to be full of meaningless words that are hard to pronounce. Mm, and few games have as many meaningless words as Atelier Iris 2, the Azoth of Destiny. Hey kids, want to play a super fun video game about brave sorcerers and epic adventures? Whoa, that is some offer. Okay, here's the downside. It's Atelier Iris 2, the Azoth of Destiny. Destiny. So lame. Yeah, you're right. It's only been about nine months since the first installment, but we're already getting a sequel. Oh, this sucks. Maybe they should have waited a little longer. Shh. You'll spend most of the time playing as one of two characters. Felt, a strapping young lad who ventures out and fights evil. Ha! Or Vise, your sort of girlfriend who stays at home and synthesizes items and weapons for Felt to use. That's right, the man goes out and works while the woman stays home and cooks. It's like Leave it to Beaver with dragons. Between the two of them, you'll unravel the mystery behind the force that's destroying the land of Eden and defeat the game's generic forces of evil. We need more power. As you may have guessed by now, Atelier Iris 2 is chock full of anime video game cliches, and you'll probably have more fun counting them than you will playing. Let's see. A feminine sword that talks to you? What are you implying? Check. Ancient piece of jewelry whose true purpose is a clouded mystery? Its true purpose is unknown. Check. British accented villain? Is there no one worthy of serving me? Uh huh. Check. At least it doesn't feature an ear splitting Japanese pop song. Why did I say that? But it's not all bad news. For those players who hate random encounters, Atelier Iris 2 has a nifty feature just for you. This meter is drained during each fight. And once it runs out, your characters won't run into another enemy within that same area. It's definitely a welcome touch. And the fast-paced active battle system makes it easy to keep track of whose turn is coming up next. But that's about as good as it gets. I failed characters are a bit too chatty during battle, and most fights boil down to simple button mashing. Die! If you're a die-hard RPG fan and all you care about is killing two dozen hours of your life, then this is the game for you. What a waste of time. Yes, yes it is. Atelier Iris 2, the Azoth of Destiny. Get the two. It's over. Out of five. His name is Felt? Well, yes, and there is a guy in a David Eddings book named Soak. Maybe naming characters after fabric is a common theme in low-quality fantasy. Do you read David Eddings books? Seventh grade was a lonely time. How lonely? Yeah. After the break. 23 Skidoo. And later on, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Control your excitement. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. We Welcome back to x -Play. Sometimes we complain about games being unoriginal. Like a couple of minutes ago, we were talking about Atelier Iris 2. The Azoth of Destiny. Don't forget the Azoth part. OK. But occasionally, a game comes along that looks at a genre in a whole new way. Like an RPG set in an alternate history 1920s full of giant cats and naked Native American ladies. Colors of the wind, indeed. Here's a review of Shadow Hearts from the New World. Sing us a song, Mariachi. Sing of the love you lost on that cold day in Hermosillo. Sing of the flamethrower stashed in your guitar. The mariachi is just the beginning. Sweet dreams. 
someone has been smoking the crack rock, and I believe their name is Shadow Hearts from the New World. This is the story of Johnny Garland. I'm the boss, Johnny Garland. He's 16, and he's a private detective. Johnny Garland. Even though he's not old enough to shave, Johnny is the pilot of this crazy plane we call pre-Depression-era America, where something rotten is afoot. You brought me back to life, didn't you? Yet somehow, it feels like I got something horrible from you, too. That would be the... Johnny quickly meets Shania and her gun foo sidekick. <laughs> this is what you get when you let a 16-year-old be a detective. Uh, hi. Most of your time will involve the RPG building blocks, talking to people, finding items, and leveling up. But the turn-based fisticuffs have an added twist. Once you choose your attack, you hit various points on this Price is Right style judgment ring. Johnny will slowly collect an entourage of freaks, but we mean freaks in a nice way. I love the giant alcoholic kitty cat. You'll need all your allies to defeat your many enemies. Like the math assassin. Shadow Hearts is unarguably quirky. Do it! Do it! But it gels in such a weird way, you won't mind that Al Capone is such a nice guy. Both Chicago and Vegas should have some peace for a little while. Thanks to you guys. Aw, Al Capone is crying. The cinematics are a visual feast, and the in-game graphics are beautiful as well. It's a good thing, because if we had to be wowed by the level design alone, Shadow Hearts would be in trouble. I don't really want to wander around hotel floor after hotel floor going slowly mad. It's bizarre. Get them. And full of math assassins. Shadow Hearts from the New World is one of the most distinctive RPGs out there right now for your PS2. A four out of five. Now play for me, Mariachi. Play! Al Capone seems so nice for a guy who ordered the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. If they're going to include historical figures, I have one question. Why wasn't Zora Neale Hurst in a playable character? Because she was a novelist, and novelists aren't good at fighting. Except for Hemingway and Toni Morrison when she's really drunk. Up next, Euro Trash. And later on, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. <laughs> Welcome noted primatologists, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Yeah, you yes. good old got nothing on me. Adam's <laughs> favorite is the bonobo. Welcome back to X-Play. Video called soccer, the world's favorite pastime. Apparently, these are people who have never heard of auto... Yeah. For those people, here's a review of winning 11-9. That's right, soccer fans. They finally shrunk down your favorite series so it'll fit in the palm of your hand. World Soccer Winning 11-9 is the first installment of the footy franchise to hit the PSP. Most of the material from the console version is here, with a couple important exceptions. The much-loved Master League mode is gone, and we also miss the announcers. In fact, this version doesn't feature any commentary, even when you make a goal. Looks like we'll just have to add our own. Okay, that was a bad idea. The series has picked up a few licensed franchises like Arsenal and Chelsea, but lots of the major clubs are still missing. Fortunately, you can recreate them from the ground up with the in-depth player editor. This mode lets you tweak all aspects of your virtual players. You can even change the celebration animations from raise the roof to, hey, I'm rubbing something in my hair, to I'm going to shoot you in the face, to, um, I'm insane. And we haven't even told you our favorite part. You can import all of your saved character customizations from your PS2 copy of the game onto your PSP. Now that's convenient. With all these improvements, it really makes us wonder what video game soccer is going to be like by the time winning 11-20 rolls around. And playing for the cyborg colony formerly known as Great Britain, Robot David Beckham must destroy Portugal. Oh my god! Robot David Beckham's gone crazy! 
Run for your life! Ah! Please don't do this! My wife is pregnant with our baby doll! Ah! Wow, the future is a dangerous place. One gripe with Winning Eleven 9 for the PSP is the way the camera has been reworked. In order to accommodate the smaller platform, the view is zoomed in so that you can see your players more clearly. It makes sense, but the limited viewing area makes for way too many missed passes. But despite any minor gripes with this version, this is still the best soccer game that you can play in your mom's minivan on the way to practice. World Soccer Winning Eleven 9 for the PSP scores a 4. Out of 5. Oh, oh, sorry. That robot David Beckham is a... Yeah, I heard robot Posh Spice killed a guy after he made fun of her Burberry jacket. That's what happens when you give trash money and dangerous cybernetic implants. After the break, finally, it's here. Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Heirs to the throne of Tamriel. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. After long, long delays, it's finally arrived. Here's a review of Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion. Tired of real life? Want to get away for a while? Maybe a week, a month, longer? Here you go. Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is one of the most insidious, social life-destroying games ever unleashed upon an unsuspecting public. Just the colossally comprehensive character creation can consume clock time. You can make just about anyone you can think of. Once you've decided who you are, you're thrown in prison and Patrick Stewart explains the story. You are the one from my dreams. When Picard says quest, I say, how long? So it's off into the world to find, um, wow, it's, it's really pretty here. H hey, look, ruins to explore. I wonder what's going on in town. Horsey, oh, horsey. Was there something I had to do? Oh yeah, Patrick Stewart wants me to save his illegitimate son and close magical gates that allow evil things from the Oblivion dimension into our world and make the sky red. But who cares about that when there are artists trapped in their own paintings? Where did you come from? You look real enough. Oblivion is all about doing whatever you want to do. Your character skills improve with use, so the game automatically tailors itself to your playstyle. Do you prefer a two-fisted master of the blade? A lock-breaking kleptomaniac? A supernatural spell slinger? It's all here. Go nuts. The province of Cyrodiil is crammed full of interesting stuff. Oblivion nails the living world better than just about any other game. It's real easy to end up with RPG ADD. You can play for dozens of hours without even touching the main quest. Join a guild or two. It is my honor to welcome you into our ranks as a Knight Brother of the Blades. Pick the landscape clean of useful foliage or stick your nose into everyone's business. Get lost or I'll pull your arm off. Hundreds of people inhabit the land and they'll all have something to say. Show me what you've got! And most of them have problems they're too lazy, stupid, or incompetent to solve for themselves. It was too much. Too fast. We were overwhelmed. They even talk to each other once in a while. Seems that these are turbulent times in the land of the Dunmer. Bye. You've Hello. got my ear. Oh, okay, that's a little creepy. Come on, guys, go away so I can break into the guard captain's room. Hello there. Hey. Okay, well, I'll just ruin your dinner then. Hi there. Wow, you guys took that a lot better than I thought you would. Hi. The full voice acting, countless quests, and beautiful graphics are great, but the combat is probably the biggest improvement over Morrowind. <laughs> Satisfaction abounds as the baddies crumble, whether you're setting them magically ablaze or giving them a taste of the cold steel of your broadsword. With linear cookie-cutter Japanese RPGs clogging the game industry's arteries, Oblivion is like a quadruple bypass of awesome. Buy it and tell your loved ones you'll miss them. You won't be seeing them for a while. A five out of five. Yeah, your girlfriend, 
is going to hate this game. Yeah, if you're trying to build a relationship, do not buy Oblivion. All others, you'll never notice that you're really lonely. Never.